Alright guys, welcome. As you may know, my channel has been demonetized, so I won't be able to make any revenues from my videos anymore. So, in order to keep the channel alive, you can support me on Patreon or make a single donation on PayPal. And something else, I'm also launching my masterclass, where I'll teach you everything there is to know about tactical analysis with all the tips and methods I personally use. If you're interested, you can find more details in the description down below. Thank you very much. Liverpool hosted the second leg of the Champions League semi-finals after a 3-0 loss to Barcelona. Klopp's men managed to qualify for the final. Let's see how the miracle happened tactically in the game. Liverpool lined up in their classic 4-3-3. Origi and Shaqiri were replacing Salah and Firmino, out because of injuries. Barcelona came in the same 4-3-3, turning into a 4-4-2 off possession. Liverpool started the game with an intense high pressing. In order to press, they keep their narrow 4-3-3 shape. Mane and Shaqiri, the wingers, remain zonal to control both the fullback and the centre-back while Origi needs to stay ball oriented as well as shutting the pass lane to Busquets. Let's see that in a video animation. There we see Barcelona's 4-4-2, 4-3-3 formation against Liverpool 4-3-3 shape. Sorry, don't mind the short numbers, most of them are wrong. Forwards start the high press. As you see, the wingers are zonal to control two players. Origi is ball oriented, ready to press the centre-back, the keeper, while shutting the pass lane to Busquets. That is very important because it allows Henderson and Milner to be closer to Rakitic and Vidal, even though they are quite zonal too in order to control the space and only the players. Fabinho's role was to cover the space, supposedly without any opponent in his zone. If midfielders lost their duel, he would be there, but most importantly, he had to keep Messi under control when he dropped centrally. And finally, the defensive line had to keep the team as high as possible. The four of them had to step out, man to man to their direct opponent. A bit asymmetrical though, because Robertson could go on Sergio Roberto, while Alexander Arnold had to press Coutinho. If the ball gets on the wing, players need to close every option, and then Henderson can press on Busquets. Barcelona would be forced to play long, directly to the forwards, but neither Suarez nor Messi could threaten the space in behind the defenders. They had to drop in order to receive the ball. And then it was about the intensity to get it back. At times, Vidal tried exploiting the space between the centre back and the full back, but Barcelona was too shaken by the intensity of the press to get past it. There you see what happened on the screenshot the pressing pattern I was talking about. But the animation of the press was a bit different when the ball went on the left side. There, we start with the same pattern, with Origi pressing up to the keeper. Again, they need to close every option, but Henderson had to provide press for both Rakitic and Alba, while Alexander-Arnold pressed on Coutinho, even though Matip also had to defend on the Brazilian when he went out of position. In general, Barca were forced to play long and gave the ball away. Here, here, just an example of individual marking and full body contact with a very high defensive line. High pressure was a key element, but now let's have a look at how Liverpool played on the ball. Barcelona remained in a very passive 4-4-2. The fullbacks were absolutely free to play wherever they wanted. We'll see that with a new animation. Barcelona in a 4-4-2, no pressure whatsoever on the centre-backs. Liverpool could play through the wings, with the fullbacks pushing high. The play was as vertical as possible, and Barcelona's medium defensive line had trouble defending backwards against the red wave. And this plan proved to be very efficient, because Liverpool scored after 6 minutes of play. Matip off pressure and free to choose the best option. The defensive line is quite high and forced back by the run in depth. Alba made an error and it provoked a chain reaction. Origi gets the rebound from Shakiri's shot and scores. As you can see, Barcelona didn't change their pressing style after the first goal. 
Players like Mane were always ready to do penetrative runs. And obviously, this allowed Liverpool to remain very high in the opposition's half. Liverpool could play high, but they were not perfect in attack. They had no shot on target after the 23rd minute, up until the end of the first half. For example, Shakiri embodied the lack of quality. He missed pretty much everything. But it brings us to another point. Counter-pressing was also super important, as Liverpool's direct play produces an important volume of ball loss. Here, Robertson loses the ball. But Mane managed to get the better of Vidal. A bit later in the first half, Barcelona recovered and started to get some opportunities, especially on transitions and quick attacking. Here, there's a tree against tree on the brick. Both Liverpool fullbacks pushing made them fragile on counters. But the Reds could count on a listen. There were several counters here, minute 45 after a corner kick. Inch perfect pass from Messi to Alba. Saved by Alisson. The goalkeeper had five saves in the game and the Champions League doesn't tolerate such a lack of efficiency. Robertson was injured, though Wijnaldum came in and James Milner got positioned as a left back. The second half started like the game began. The defenders were off pressure and could move the ball quickly to the wing. And Barca had another chance on the fast attack. Messi to Suarez. Again, saved by the Brazilian keeper. But then, something happened. Counter-pressing was still a key element of the game. Wijnaldum was the midfielder charged with providing support inside the box. And his calls. But it was just the beginning. Two minutes later, Wijnaldum to bring support inside the box on the cross again and he dominates PK to score the header. Liverpool kept on flooding Barca's box with crosses until the 60th minute. Classic change, Coutinho out for Semedo. Even off pressure, Barca had trouble holding the ball well with quality. Despite having around 60% possession, they were never able to complete more than 10 passes in a row without losing the ball. Then Vidal went out for Arthur. After the changes, Barcelona tried to overload the right side of the pitch, with Roberto back in midfield instead of Coutinho on the left, without success really. And around the 17th minute, new turning point. Despite being led 3-0, Barcelona didn't increase their level of intensity. That's the action bringing the corner kick. And then the genius combination. Apparently, the technical staff told the players that Barca were not really focused on dead balls, but it was not specifically practiced in training. Well, Origi scores. Barcelona was left for dead. They didn't have any attempt during the last 15 minutes of play with 80% possession. It was mostly a game of intensity and efficiency. Liverpool ran 112 kilometers, Barcelona only 105, and Liverpool had seven shots on target, four goals. Barcelona did okay with five shots on target, but nothing went in. Well, that's it for today's analysis. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button. All links in the description to support the channel. See you next time.